Love incredibly tasty seafood? Welcome to Seafood 101, where we celebrate the journey from sea to market to table. For more than 100 years, Seattle has been the home of our commercial fishing industry and the North Pacific fishing fleet. Today, our industry has never been healthier. Seattle is the home of hundreds of fishing companies, shipyards, suppliers, and marine services. Fishing is the past, present, and future of the Pacific Northwest. If you love sustainably caught wild seafood, you've come to the right place. Visit PacificNorthwestSeafood101.com to check out all the delicious recipes, news, and upcoming events. Now here's what's on the menu for today's program. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Seafood 101. My name is Jeremiah Karpowitz, and I'm the Editorial Director at National Fisherman Magazine. And today I'm joined by Chris Woodley, who's the Executive Director of the Ground Fish Forum. Chris, how are you? Great. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm well. So tell us a little bit about the, the Ground Fish Forum. Sure. So uh, Ground Fish Forum is a trade association. We have five member companies that operate 19 trawl catcher processor vessels uh, in the uh, federal fisheries off of Alaska. So Bering Sea, Aleutian Islands, and Gulf of Alaska. And our, our, our mission is to, you know, ensure the long-term uh, viability of, of our fisheries while promoting sustainable uh, harvests um, and providing economic prosperity to the maritime communities that we operate in. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, more about those those members? You know the the types of uh, companies that they are, and even the types of individuals that uh, support them. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So so our fleet. So you know maybe maybe talking about it from the aspect of like number of boats and uh, you know our operations. So we have you know nineteen trawl catcher processor vessels. Um, we harvest uh, yellowfin sole, rock sole, flathead sole, acamacral, Pacific Ocean perch, and Pacific cod. Um, you know, the, uh, the operations are very closely monitored by NOAA fisheries. We have two uh, f um, fishery observers on board our vessels 100% of the time. So all of our catch gets, uh, you know, every haul gets monitored and weighed and sampled. So we always have real-time data as to, you know, what our harvests are. And that, that's, uh, you know, critically important to, you know, to have sustainable seafood. Talk, talk a little bit about your your seasons. What do those what do those look like, or when do they rain, uh, run from? So our fisheries typically start around the twentieth of January, and they actually go through about the middle of November. Um, but they do uh, they, they do shift a little bit uh, in in terms of location. Uh, you know, most of our our activities you know start off in the year in in the Bering Sea, and then in the towards the springtime, some of them shift out to the Aleutian Islands. Uh, in the summer, they shift out, or a couple of companies will operate uh, more in the Gulf of Alaska. And uh, then when fall comes around, people or the, the vessels tend to congregate back in the Bering Sea. And, uh, and they, again, they usually run through about the, um, you know, the, the middle of November. And are those consistent shifts from year to year? Like, is it the same, the same shift? Uh, no, 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 no year is the same when it comes to fishing, you know, but yeah, but that's, that's the general pattern. And, you know, on our boats, you know, our, our typical boat has about uh, 40 people on board, 40 to 45 people, depending on the size of the boat. So it's, you know, composed of, uh, you know, the, the, the fishing crew and then the processing crew. Um, in, in total, our, our uh, you know, direct employment by our fleet is, is close to 2,200 people a year. You so touched quite a number of families that, you know, that, that depend on our operations. No, it sounds that way. And you touched on it before, kind of the economic impact of, of some of the work you guys do. And I wanted to see if you could, could tell us a little bit about more about what that looks like, either in terms of numbers or, you know, even yeah. anecdotally. Yeah, so, um, you know, in, term, in terms of numbers, you know, we harvest, uh, you know, over the last couple of years, about uh, 450,000 uh, uh, metric tons of of fish a year and um you know in terms of you know all of our our uh fishes uh landed you know we, we process it on board but then we landed all in alaska and so that contributes about four and a half million dollars a year to uh, state of alaska taxes um you know for, through their uh, fishery resource landing tax and you know our uh we do about 500 port calls a year in the state of alaska so pretty much, you know, every, it, it's, it, it's pretty much, you know, two boats a day-ish is, is what you'll see in, you know, primarily in like the ports of, of Unalaska or Kodiak or Adak or, uh, you know, a couple of other places, but primarily Unalaska is where we, we do most of our operations. 
Excellent. Yeah, no, it's a big, big impact. And, you know, how does that factor into how you guys prioritize your environmental stewardship or how well, that's, that's, I mean, that, that was the whole basis behind Groundfish Forum in the first place, you know, going back to the mid nineties was, um, uh, you know, our, our fisheries had issues or a lot of issues with, uh, with crab bycatch. And so in, in 1996 is when Groundfish Forum first came together using that data that I told you about using that real time information to try to try to better control our, um, our crab bycatch numbers. Um, you, you know, all of our fisheries now are uh, certified by the Marine Stewardship Council and the Alaska Responsible Fishery Management Program. So when you know when when people are going to the grocery store, you know they want to buy you know they want to buy seafood that's sustainably harvested, is healthy, you know, and, and good for their, their families. And so, you know, looking for that blue and white MSC label is the, the the surest way to do that. And all of our fisheries are certified by the Marine Stewardship Council. So in terms of environmental st or, uh, sustainability, you know, that's a, you know, real key factor and, and that, you know, our, our, uh, our fisheries are sustainable. Um, and in terms of like our, our boats, you know, one of the big things that's going on within our sector right now is the recapitalization of our fleet. So all of these new boats, um, and I, I say all of them, uh, with, within our five companies, each company has undergone like a, uh, um, replaced at least one vessel in the last five years. Uh, so the the new boats meet the you know the highest international standards for um, for environmental stewardship and for uh, safety of the, you know of the vessel and the crew. Would you say those environmental con uh, concerns and priorities are the top issue you guys are facing, or maybe you could talk about a few more that are top of the list for you guys? Well, you know, 2020, like everybody, it's been it's been about COVID. Um, so when our fishery first started in January, you know, COVID wasn't an issue, but by, uh, by the time March rolled around, uh, there was, you know, growing consensus and understanding within the, the North Pacific fishing community that we had potentially had a major problem on our hands. So, um, a, a you know, large number of, of folks from the fishing industry came together, um, I guess it was late March, or I'm sorry, late February, and put together a, uh, a group to help develop standards to prevent COVID from getting on board our vessels and prevent COVID from getting into the communities up in Alaska that we operate in. And so that, that turned into, um, you know, uh, 14 day quarantine requirements and, and testing of COVID before we would send our people up to the boats and then, you know, screening on board. And, you know, so far, knock on wood, um, you know, we haven't had any, uh, uh, outbreaks on you know within our fleet of vessels um and you know i mean it's it's a tricky virus we continue to work extremely hard at it and uh um you know to this day our you know that it's 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 really been our number one priority this year this year has been very weird because everything seems to be about uh um, just making sure that our crews are safe and making sure that they're not sick and making sure that when they travel to alaska that they're healthy well, and so much of it, I mean, that's the challenge is that some of it is, is on the fly. I mean, you're just talking about those standards that you got to just come up with right. right then and there almost. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and things have definitely changed. You know, I mean, we, we've learned an awful lot about the vessel or I'm sorry about the, the virus since March um, and continued to do so. So yeah, it's been, it's been an ongoing challenge. You know, we've uh, we're, we're very proud of the work that we're done and yeah, hopefully, you know, we don't have any, uh, um, any issues going into this fall. Um, nothing's guaranteed. It's a, it's a tricky thing, but, uh, you know, we continue to work hard at it. Yeah. Best you can do is prepare. Like it sounds like you guys are doing. Um, so where can people go to, to learn more about Groundfish Forum? Well, you know, um, I, I think I, I'm guessing that, that, uh, you know, most of the stuff that we deal with is kind of like fishery management related and is, is, is for the average person is, is painful <laughs> beyond, beyond belief. Um, you know, when I think of what, you know what what consumers are interested in um i think of going to the marine storage or the the, the marine uh, stewardship council website there's a good summary of our fisheries on there um and about the sustainability efforts that go into uh to uh, you know go into making sure that our, our fisheries remain sustainable so i you know it's a www.msc.org perfect and that uh, and that and that's where people can learn about uh, about our fisheries, um, and it's uh, you know a great source of information to understand how you know um, how fisheries are determined to be sustainable. And then um, and then again with the uh, 
uh, state of Alaska's responsible fishery management program. That's another good source of information. Well, it sounds like both of those are a good starting place. And then yeah, and, and they're objective, of... right? I mean, that that's the other thing too, is that they, you know, the, the, you know, they, they consider, you know, fisheries from all over the world and they're all held to a same standard. And so that's the, you know, the, that, that's kind of the, you know, where the rubber meets the road. Um, so yeah, those are the sources I go to. Beautiful. Well, thanks, Chris, so much for yeah, joining us for, uh, for Seafood 101, where we celebrate the journey from sea to market to table. Remember to hit the sub subscribe button to keep up on all the delicious recipes, shopping tips, and industry news. Thanks again. All right. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for today's Seafood 101 program. Seafood 101 is sponsored by the Seattle Propeller Club with the Port of Seattle. It's presented by the Alaska Bering Sea Crabbers, Bristol Bay Regional Seafood Development Association, Freezer Longline Coalition, and the Groundfish Forum. Special thanks to National Fisherman Magazine and Pacific Marine Expo. Visit PacificNorthwestSeafood101.com to check out all the delicious recipes, news, and upcoming events. See you next time as we continue to celebrate the journey from sea to market to table. Cheers! <music>